Well, it could be that, for instance, there are duplicates of us out there in some distant realm in this wider multiverse. That's one of the mathematical implications that we come to. You're now, you hear my that? Mind, man. <laughs> blown my mind. Welcome to News Beast. We've got Columbia professor of physics Brian Green in the house, authored the cover story of this week's Newsweek, The New Secrets of the Universe. Welcome to News Beast. Thank you. So, without making my head go all supernova, what exactly is the mystery of the multiverse? Well, it's the possibility that what we have long thought to be everything, the universe, everything that we see in the cosmos around us, may not be everything. It may be one small piece of a much grander whole, and that grander whole may have other realms that would rightly be called universes of their own. I should say it's highly speculative. It comes out of mathematical analyses, but there's enough reason from the analysis to take these ideas seriously. I just have this, this great vision of you guys all sitting in a back room, kind of, you know, after a Stones concert, being like, but hold on, man. <laughs> what if? What if? I'm glad you phrased it that way. Let me tell you why. I think many people also think of it that way. But it's not that we sit in rooms and say, wouldn't it be crazy if this were true? We do sober, concrete mathematical calculations, and from the math, this possibility emerges. That's why we take it seriously. Not because it's a weird and wonderful sounding idea, because it comes to us from our analysis. So what are, what are some of the, the, the implications uh, of this, were it to be true? Well, the big thing that needs to be underscored is the if, if it if, were to if, be true. Yeah. So once that is on the table, well, it could be that, for instance, there are duplicates of us out there in some distant realm in this wider multiverse. That's one of the mathematical implications that we come to. You're now, you hear my that? Mind, man. <laughs> blown my mind. All right. <laughs> you know, and there could be variations on the reality that we know of here, where maybe I'm in that chair and you're in this one, having to answer all these questions. I would be a questions. really, really lousy physics <laughs> professor in any parallel universe. I'm pretty sure about that. Um, that well, this is all like really heady stuff. I guess, I guess the question is so, Congress funds some of this. Right. I mean, this sure, is yeah, and yeah. you fund some of it. I, yes, I, I we all we all we all we all fund this. What are, what are the practical applications for this sort of uh, inquiry or is it simply beyond that? Well, the simplest answer is there are no practical implications of this whatsoever. We're trying to push the boundary of our understanding of where we fit into the wider cosmos. But having said that, let me point out that if you had in this chair some of the people who developed quantum mechanics back in the 1920s or 1930s, you said to them, what is this stuff going to do for us? They'd again say, probably not much. We're trying to understand molecules and atoms very far from everyday life. But the fact that you have a cell phone, the fact that you have a personal computer, the fact that there's wondrous medical technology that is saving lives around the world today, right. all relies on the integrated circuit, which comes from quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is responsible for something like 35% of the gross national product, which is just to say, fundamental cool. research at a given moment in time can have big implications when you allow it to mature. So, so how are we doing as a society, the American society, in terms of our science education and secondarily how's Obama doing in terms of funding the sciences in this time of deficits and cutting? We've got a long way to go to reach our potential in science education. I mean we have an event here in New York with the World Science Festival. It's actually it's coming up just around the corner May 30th to June 3rd where we are trying to step outside the traditional educational system and allow people to immerse themselves in the wonders of science and our point our point is to show people that science is not the kind of thing that gave you a headache in the classroom. It's not the kind of thing where you have to memorize facts or learn how to solve this equation. Those details are important, but they are at the service of wondrous ideas that tell us where the universe may have come from, where life may have come from, where consciousness may have come from. These are the ideas that kids need to be excited about and where they want to learn the details. You don't want to learn details for details sake. Final, final question, because this is all fascinating. We could go on forever, but there is, you know, th there, there's always, I suppose, been an age-old struggle between faith and science. Do you have many physicist friends who go to church? Well, it's interesting. I was at a gathering. It was a closed-door, no press allowed gathering where these kinds of issues were on the table among many scientists. And I thought we would all be like-minded. Namely, we would all not be believers. And I was surprised that there's quite a range. And my own personal view is science can't rule out religion. It can't rule out God. God could be behind it all, set it all up so we've discovered what we've discovered, but set it up so that we don't have any direct evidence for his existence or her existence, whatever the right word is. 
My view is, if what we are doing as scientists is working out God's design, and that's what we're doing, if that's the case, I'm thrilled to be part of that momentous journey. But if that's not the case, and I don't think it is, if what we're doing is just working out the deep laws of the cosmos that brought the universe into existence and have guided its evolution, if I'm part of that journey and I can take that a little bit further, I'm thrilled to be part of that. So in a day-to-day -day way, it just doesn't matter. Professor Brian Green, author of the cover story, New Secrets of the Universe, thank you for coming My on pleasure. this feast.